All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this breakout session. It's a pleasure to meet you all here. Welcome, quantum enthusiasts. It's quite a busy place here. Nevertheless, I'm glad to see you're all here being interested in learning a bit more about the quantum ecosystem in Berlin. My name is Katharina Witte. I'm an innovations manager for photonics and quantum technologies at the photonics cluster Berlin Brandenburg at Berlin Partner for Business and Technology. Berlin Partner is the Economic Development Agency of the city and Berlin. And this session today is part of our one weekly delegation tour here calling Berlin Quantum Meets USA. And we are happy to have companies, startups, and research institutions with us to give an insight what quantum technology in the German capital is about and what we are doing. And um, so with this, uh, I like now to give over to our um, participants from our delegation and within the next 40 minutes you will get an introduction about the know-how on quantum technologies coming from the German capital. So our first pitch comes from Benjamin Sijos, from the quantum engineer uh, from Architonix. Thank you. Uh, my name is Benjamin Sichos. I work as a quantum systems engineer at Architonics. And uh, whilst I'm studying at the University of Glasgow, where I'm currently undertaking my final year of my undergraduate degree in computing science and physics. And uh, Architonics is creating the world's first all optical XPU, a general purpose, a general purpose processor, uh, general purpose fr processor that uh, for ultra low power, high performance computing. Uh, our team, uh, we are a startup based and founded in Germany in 2021 with a team from all over the EU. Our team comprises of optical computing specialists and skilled software developers, sorry, uh, and skilled software developers with expertise across all areas of integrated photonics. Our in-house developed photonic design automation tools and all optical control flow puts us in a unique position to create the first all optical computers. And using our computer architecture that is, uh, that is beyond the typical von Neumann architecture, speci specifically designed for photonics, this allows us to create a high performance computer for the data center that not only enable faster and more energy efficient AI applications, but also general purpose tasks such as simulations, video processing, or cryptography. We do this by combining the best of the optical digital computing with optical analog computing and optical quantum computing. Uh, furthermore, our supply, ch supply chain is purely European from fabrication to packaging, allowing for an unmatched supply chain security uh, in the high performance quantum computing domain. Our goal is to usher in a new era of uh, uh, our new era of photonic processes that are highly paralyzable and radically more power efficient and boast a much lower latency by using light instead of uh, electronics. We're, uh, seeking, we're seeking partnerships uh, to initiate pi uh, pilot projects, endeavors related to all optical computing and research and development projects. And using the strengths of our optical digital computing with optical analog and optical quantum uh, approaches we strive to create the first uh, high-performance computing, so the first fully integratable solution to high-performance computing. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the second pitch now is coming from Sven Köppel, CSO from Annabrit. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Um, today I'm talking about um, something which brings us here as a Berlin company. What if we had perfect Kubis already today? And, um, well, let me introduce Annebrit. Um, it is the global leader for quantum-inspired classical, or quantum-inspired analog computing. And um, we have, uh, or we build products which look like, roughly like here on the left, and we have the vision to embed our chips into every computer in the world as a coprocessor. And what is quite interesting about analog computing that it is a major technology, um, actually never went away if, if you look into your smartphone, like 70% of your smartphone is still analog and uh, we um, empower analog computing for computing like 1,000 times faster and at the same time 1,000 times 
less energy requiring than current day digital computing. And we are already selling um, discrete prototypes of these computers and they sell like mad. For instance, I brought one today with me here. It is the analog thing. Um, it looks a bit old school. It is by purpose because it's for educational purposes. And um, But we, nevertheless, we made a revenue last year, which is quite significant. So we bootstrapped. We, nevertheless, we also made an invest last week. We got an invest of 600K seed. Um, now entering basically this uh, two, um, two, two ways of company funding and um, we have we are also partnering with a lot of um, agencies in science and government and um, yes one last point is that 70% um, of our customers are in the United States so there is a really um, a present need from our side to enter the US market even more with our presence and uh, eventually with questions for invests. Thank you. Thanks. So our next speaker is uh, Leon Messner, CTO from uh, the newly founded startup Advanced Quantum Light Sources, AQLS. Yeah, hi, I'm Leon from AQLS and I'm very happy to be here and talk to you about our new light source. Uh, we call it the laser of quantum optics or the laser of quantum light. And new light sources have often been uh, a source of disruption and innovation. Just think about electric lighting or think about um, the laser. Although you cannot really see the laser very often, um, it changed technology, it changed science and also our daily lives. And um, then, yeah, especially we want to bring this change to all fields of quantum optics basically. So communication, sensing, and computing. And all these fields, they basically um, have quantum technology and quantum optics as a uh, core technology. And our product, um, comparatively to other products, um, is very narrow band. So we call it the laser of quantum light. It's very narrow band, down to a 100 um, megahertz of line width. And additionally to this, you can order it from um, visible to a near infrared wavelengths. It's very small, has low compact um, dimensions, is uh, very power efficient, and uh, has a high heralding efficiency. And this basically makes it ideally suited for high demand applications such as uh, addressing atoms or building QKD systems or also um, for figuring out quantum uh, optical quantum computing. Um, so, due to our team's 30 years uh, experience in the field of quantum optics, we already know quite a lot of problems in this field. And um, we are there to help our customers um, if they have problems. And uh, we are also happy to design custom uh, photonic properties and custom uh, design properties for them. So, this makes AQLS a good partner for the challenging and changing needs of basic research and also um, for your photonic um, and quantum optical business. So, um, yeah, if you could not yet find the right quantum light source for your business, contact AQLS for the laser of quantum light. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And the next will be Markus Krotzig, who is head of Joint Lab Integrated in Quantum Sensors at the Ferdinand Braun Institute. Yeah, hi folks. Uh, nice to be here. Um, yeah, we are the Joint Lab Integrated Quantum Sensors, and our mission is to develop compact and robust atom-based measurement technologies. As the name says, we are a joint lab between two institutions. One is the Ferdinand Braun Institute. It's a 3-5 semiconductor research institution. And the other one is the Institute of Physics of Humboldt University, both located in the southeast of Berlin, close to the airport, uh, in the beautiful science and tech campus of Adlershof. And in our daily work, we are really fascinated by all the wonderful things you can do with atoms, atomic vapors, cold to hot. But we want to bring them to application in the areas of uh, frequency timing, field sensing, and also network technology. And in order to um, yeah, improve the technology readiness level to, yeah, what we say, five to six, we are developing plug and play systems, um, which you see on the upper right, which we also test in relevant environments, just as space. For specific applications, when we want to go to lower size, weight, and power budgets, or when we want to operate in special environments like vacuum, we are developing our own components and integration technologies, um, such as yeah, small wafer-level-based 
uh, mem cells or UHV compatible adhesive integration. And since we are operating yeah, straight at the edge towards applications and industry, we are very happy that just as of last week, uh, Berlin now has its own uh, quantum technology hub. Uh, so there we would like to bring together startups and relevant stakeholders and form yeah, the Berlin quantum ecosystem. So if you want to work with Atoms or with Atoms businesses, come talk to us. Thank you. So our next speaker is Professor Dr. Martin Schell. He is the executive director of the Fraunhofer Institute Heinrich Hertz. Thank you very much for the introduction. Fraunhofer is, uh, HHI is part of the German Fraunhofer Society. Uh, that, that means we get 20% uh, of our funding from the federal government and we acquire the other 80% ourselves, typically ending up with some f uh, 40 to 50% direct industry uh, contracts. And this business is starting here in, uh, uh, also in quantum application. HHI itself, it's about 500 people, 80 to 100 million budget, and uh, about uh, 5 to 10 percent already is quantum related. What we bring to the table in quantum technologies is shown on this slide here. Starting on the left, very down in the food chain, we do optochips. Uh, we believe we are the only European source for single um, photon avalanche detectors, uh, which go into quantum communications. We have very high quantum efficiency uh, long wavelength detectors, which uh, go into quantum computing. In the middle, you see an example of photonic integrated circuits. We target to remove all free beam optics from all quantum lab tables, and we have different technologies at, uh, to choose from, starting from indium phosphide for telecom, polymers for complex hybrid integrated, and synfilm lithium niobate uh, for fast uh, visible uh, light uh, manipulation. On the upper end of the value chain, we also do QKD system, systems. What many of the physicists uh, forget is that not the single photon detector and the single photon source is only a very small part of the overall chain. You need some logic around, you need some failure correction, you need uh, key management uh, system integration, and this is done in our uh, systems department. So if anybody of you is interested in using one of these things, just let me know. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to welcome Professor Dr. Arno Rauschenbeutel. He's a professor at the Humboldt University of Berlin. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. And um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm heading the Fundamentals of Optics and Photonics group, and our research is about um, controlling and harvesting light matter interaction. And um, I would like to pitch here about a novel type of single photon source. We actually recently demonstrated a novel mechanism, fundamentally new, uh, which allows you to transform laser light into a stream of single photons. And um, you can read about that in uh, Nature Photonics. The QR code hides the link. And um, we are now working towards demonstrating uh, this uh, using hot atomic vapors and make it work at telecom wavelength. So uh, the nice thing about it is that the single photons are uh, then narrowband and compatible with the atoms that we use for generating them. So that's uh, rubidium in this case. And uh, in principle, the mechanism, however, can really be adapted to any uh, wavelength as long as you have quantum emitters um, to use as a filter for the laser light. And um, currently, as I said, we're working towards a demonstrator and we are looking for an industry partner who may be interested in um, realizing or developing a really plug and play device so where you can just connect our filter to a your laser and transform the laser light into a stream of single photons. So, if you're interested about it, please come and see me after the session. Thank you very much. And now we're going a bit broader. So the next speaker is uh, Oliver Hasse, CEO from the Innovation Network for Advanced Materials. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is Oliver Hasse of um, Innovation Network of Advanced Materials, so, or ENAM, or INAM, as I would say in English. 
Um, we are an initiative in Berlin building a global decentralized ecosystem to support hardware deep tech startups. Lots of words in one sentence. So very simply put, Berlin has been a city that's been thriving on software startups. You probably know many of them. What we set out from 2016 onwards was to support hardware startups that come from the universities in Berlin, that are spin-outs from there, but also that want to come to Berlin and set up business there to use the ecosystem, to use the facilities, and to move forward. As such, we've built up an ecosystem which basically spans the globe, and um, I apologize for all these very, very small icons down there, but I believe that uh, when you want to portray an ecosystem on a slide, if it's very busy, that's a good sign. Um, we do startup programs. You see the ones there in the middle, Atma Lab, that's for pre-founding to, to uh, pre-seed, uh, Atma.com, that's for around industry prototype, and finally, Atma.com Scale, that's leading the startups into Series A funding, brackets open. One of our startups has just raised uh, 40 million on Monday, or they announced on Monday that they raised uh, 40 million euros, uh, which is in the hardware space quite a chunk of money, actually. What we also are very, very happy um, with is the performance of our startups in the long run. Since 2016, 90%, over 90% actually, of our startups have survived and are still active and busy in the market. Growing more or less quickly, but they are still there. And that is basically turning upside down what you hear from the general startup landscape where it's rather 90% of the startups fail. Last point that I want to make, and that is very suitable for this context here, of course, is we're absolutely also looking at computing technologies, from upgrades to the current chip architectures to, of course, quantum technologies. And to that end, we're doing an international conference in Berlin on the 28th of November this year called the Future of Computing Conference, where we bring together players from industry, research, startups, investors, to discuss pertinent issues in the area. If you want to know about, if you want to know about more uh, about this conference, come talk to me, and I'm very happy to supply you with any information that you might require. Thank you very much. Over to you, Katarina. Thank you, Oliver. So the next speaker is Michael Ulrich, CEO from the startup Emo Space. Thank you, Katarina. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Shall I say, guten Morgen. I'm, rep uh, I'm representing the company Emo Space, Raumfahrttechnik GmbH. Raumfahrttechnik, nobody of you knows German, understands German, means astronautics technique. So we are a space company. What has a space company to do with quantum and with photons? It's very easy to, to have that link because for we, we, what we are doing is quantum key distribution. For the quantum key distribution for several kinds of these uh, art to uh, send out keys, you need streams of photons which will be sent out to ground stations or to your receivers. And for that, for that free beam uh, line, you need, let's say, space engineering technique and high sophisticated technique. The, the physicists do in their labs a uh, distance of uh, one meter or 10 centimeter. What we are doing these, we want to have beams from, let's say from 100 to 1,000 kilometer. That, that's a challenge and that's what the MO Space can do. We are well experienced in space engineering and we put all the systems together for these systems which can provide QGD systems. And we call that systems payloads. So what we are doing, we are developing payloads and we are selling these payloads. What we're also doing, we put these payloads on satellites or on airships. And from these points, for these, from these high altitude points or from the satellites, we send out the photon streams down to the ground stations. But we also, are involved in the architecture of complete QKD systems. We are working on several programs and we are leading one very famous German program uh, which builds the architecture of a complete QKD system in Germany. 
So that's what we are doing. What we also, what you can, what you can see is the airship. Uh, it's nearly 100 meter long, it's 300 feet. It, it would carry our payload from seven kilograms. What you also can see is the Berlin Tower. Which height has the Berlin Tower? 365 meters. All right, we will also have the time uh, for a few questions after the pitches, um, but there are still a few more to come. So the next speaker is Adrian Marco from our local photonics association, the Optic Berlin Brandenburg. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Mr. Marco from Optic BB, Optical Technology of Berlin and Brandenburg, Optic BB. And so we are the association of the photonic and microelectronic companies and research institutes in this uh, capital region with around about 100 companies and 30 mostly worldwide well-known research institutes. And we try to be the voice of uh, these hidden or not hidden uh, champions. And photonics is also one very important point uh, for quantum technology uh, to enable this technology. And so a lot of our companies, of our members, are working on quantum technology. And on the other hand, we also, with our members and with our region, we, we cover the whole supply chain from fundamental research, very basic research, up to also upscaling and production in, in photonics, also mass production photonics. And so if you have the idea to, to join this region, this very um, fruitful region also for quantum technology, just came to me and asked me for suppliers, for corporations, and also for using this whole supply chain, also, also the uh, infrastructure which covers nearly everything you need uh, for your business. Thank you. And now the next pitch is coming from Andreas Toss, CEO of Toss Media. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Andreas Toss, as you see, and I'm a physicist and a communication expert. And my business is to make these talents available to the quantum community. Um, I will tell you how this works in a moment, but first I ask you for a favor. Who of you has written a scientific paper? Please raise your hands. So these are many. This is an exhaustive endeavor, endeavor and uh, this is not enough if you start with your science startup a spinner from a university, then this, this paper is just to your scientist experts. If you want to make this knowledge, your idea, visible to the broader public, to your actual business audience, then you can come to TOS Media and we help you to bring out a press release, a feature article, a social media strategy. The point is, we first find out who is your target audience and then we fix the strategy how you can contact this audience. So, this is what I do. Uh, one of my customers uh, counted more than 70 platforms where some of my press releases have been published. And uh, I'm actually writing 80, or publishing 80% of the text in America. Um, if you want to know how this works, just come to me afterwards. If you want to learn how this works, you can join me for a workshop in Berlin on November 13th. Thank you very much. And now the next speaker is Björn Globisch, head of R&D from Toptika Igeljag. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Yeah, my name is Björn. I'm very happy to be here. Um, thinking beyond, this is what we want to do at Toptika Igeljag. And in the quantum technology, this 
for us means we have to bring all these beautiful lab experiments that you have into real applications, be it in uh, industry or in space or wherever. So thinking beyond means bringing lab experiments into real applications. And we think at Toptica Eagle Yard we can help with this endeavor by providing very compact, very stable, and um, very mature laser technology, because many of your experiments need lasers. Um, and what we can do at Toptica Eagle Yard is we are um, experts in hermetic laser diet packaging, in submicron assembly of optical elements, and we have a space qualified process for our laser diet module fabrication. Um, so in the end, we make hermetic laser diets that you can use for your quantum technology applications. And just a quick introduction of who we are. Toptica Eagle Yards, we are located in the southeast of Berlin. We have approximately 60 employees, a turnover of almost 9 million euros. And we belong to the Toptica Group, which might be very um, popular in the community. Um, and with this, we provide the, let's say, the tiny version of the Toptica lasers uh, that you know. And I brought two examples uh, of our recently launched products. Uh, one is the Mini ECL, which is a rich waveguide laser, which is stabilized in frequency or in wavelength by a volume break rating, and you get very nice performance. You get a narrow line width of below 200 kilohertz, a good side suppression ratio, and output powers of uh, over 80 milliwatts. And the wavelengths that we address with this uh, mini ECL, they correspond to famous uh, transitions in quantum technology. So we have 770, 780, 852, and 895 nanometers. And if these 80 milliwatts of output power are not enough for your experiment, you can use the mini TA, which is a fiber couple tapered amplifier. And this fits the wavelength of the mini ECL and just boosts in power uh, to the watt level so that you can pump your exper uh, experiment with light uh, of narrow line width and very high power. And last but not least, I brought um, a sketch of our uh, quantum technology relevant wavelength, which you see they cover basically everything from 600 nanometers up to 1,000 nanometers, and we are constantly working on extending this, going more into the green, into the blue, into the UV, and also in the infrared. So if you're interested, to miniaturize your experiment and bring it into real applications, I'm very happy to talk to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank all speakers um, giving this overview about the quantum ecosystem in Berlin. You can have access to all the slides and pictures shown within the last half an hour uh, scanning this QR code. And um, there is a second QR code inviting you to our pitch and networking event tomorrow evening at the German Embassy. So we would be happy to welcome you. And um, probably I would like to say also a few more words about the quantum technology ecosystem in Berlin. So you, you got an impression by the pitches how broad the community is. We are dealing with fundamental research, be dealing with quantum computing, photonics, um, enabling technologies, also like the microelectronics, quantum sensing, and... Um, uh, also quantum communication. And as you probably know, being familiar with the quantum technology ecosystem uh, worldwide, Berlin is known for its very high and excellent research. But now we want to bring in all this excellent knowledge also into application. And due to this, we started last week, we had the official kickoff of the Berlin Quantum Alliance. Um, we haven't put this on the, sorry, we haven't put this on the slide um, here, um, but if you uh, type in uh, qt-berlin.de, you will get a bit more of information about how the quantum ecosystem in Berlin looks like. And this initiative called the Berlin Quantum Alliance, what's all about looking for potential applications for the successful transfer of quantum technology into industry, into companies, into real applications. And this initiative is basically funded also by the um, 
Berlin Senate. Um, we are getting 25 million euros for the range of about five years. There is a, a big bunch of this money going into the fundamental research, fostering new professorships, um, also pushing and supporting um, students, postdocs in their career, getting good new talents for the quantum technology. But there are also 10 million for very um, activities very close to industry. So we are looking for collaborations on an international level, of course, but also within the community in Berlin. So uh, like uh, Marco said in one of the um, pitches, um, the LEAP, the Quantum Innovation Hub, is now open um, not just for startups, but also for getting into contact with the quantum ecosystem. And here we want to bring together um, people looking for the new applications, seeing the potential of quantum technologies for industry um, in all different kind of sectors. And I know that um, as you're all kind of experts in quantum technology, you see that there is a difference um, between the um, being close to applications. So, so probably quantum computing is at a stage where we are theoretically know the potential, but real applications are just starting, while quantum sensing is on a step much further. So also here we have an ecosystem looking for, um, I don't know, probably an, uh, a medical or health sector um, where we can talk about um, applications of the um, technology developed in um, the um, quantum uh, labs in, in Berlin and bringing this now to the application. And um, with this kind of activity, so building up a network, um, also our delegation is basically part of the initiatives we are doing at the Berlin Quantum um, Alliance. This uh, is basically um, the idea to um, bringing quantum technology from Berlin to an international level, collaborating um, also with our European partners. And as we heard in the session before, um, I like this idea of collaborating. I mean, Europe is characterized by lots of different um, countries, but nevertheless, we see a strong tendency everywhere in the world pushing quantum technologies onto the next level, going out of the lab into the application. And I think um, on an international level, this would be great to um, collaborate and uh, to um, initiate. Uh, um, maybe, I, I think it's a bit uh, probably spontaneous, but uh, Arno, would you be probably able also to say a few words more about the scientific part of the quantum, uh, Berlin Quantum Alliance? So what kind of activities are, are there? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Katarina. So, as Katharina said, there is, uh, the state of Berlin supports quantum technologies with 25 millions, and out of these 25 millions, 15 millions goes into fundamental research, and we will, uh, or started to invest um, these 15 millions into three lines of um, support, and the first one is education and international cooperation, we build there on the Berlin School of Optical Sciences and Quantum Technologies, which we endow with three million euros to hire PhD students and uh, have international workshops. Uh, we will have two positions opening for new appointments in Berlin, one in experimental quantum simulation and one in uh, and computation, and one in quantum algorithms and quantum software at Humboldt University and at Technical University, uh, respectively. And then uh, last but not least, um, we have uh, six million going into fundamental research. Um, this is actually building on uh, Einstein Research Unit, which is a Berlin-wide uh, network on working on near-term perspectives of quantum uh, devices noisy as we know <laughs> and um, so this uh, Einstein research unit is uh, parallel to Berlin Quantum Alliance but the results uh, will be actually uh, we build on these results to have further projects in research 
uh, which advance uh, quantum technologies as well. So this is the uh, fundamental science side. And then Katharina said that there's also the more applied side uh, where 10 million uh, plus European money uh, goes into uh, industry, uh, academia, cooperation, and also industry projects. So if there's questions about that, um, again, after the session, I, I'm very happy uh, to meet and chat. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, you're all invited to get in contact with our um, participants from the delegation also after this session. Um, we are happy to talk about potential ideas, how to collaborate um, within the Berlin Quantum Alliance, um, getting international relations and um, connections. And yeah, so now the audience uh, are open or the session is open for questions. So please, if you have any questions also to our um, presented pitches, feel free to ask. Okay, if this is not the case, <laughs> yeah, please. Well, maybe a question because Berlin, there's also Munich, um, Hanover. Mm -hmm. How do you connect to the other Berlin hubs? Excellent question. I mean, this is of, uh, for sure a challenging task. We have a lot of communities in Germany. Um, of course, there is also competition. But I like the idea to get in contact with all these ecosystems and to learn from each other. I mean, you gave the example in your presentation as well, saying we, we have competencies everywhere in Europe. And each region, not just on a national level, but also international, has very strong expertise in one field or the other, and we can support. If we work all together, um, we will get into like pushing quantum technology into application. And I think the goal also for the Berlin Quantum Alliance is to extend this network. And we will get in contact, or already are, I think on a scientific level, um, researchers are exchanging with each other results on conferences, collaborating between the research institutes and universities. Um, but also on this, um, I don't know how to call it, probably ecosystem networking level, it's important to get in contact and to see how you can find synergies um, without um, cannibalizing each other. I think this is the challenge. Um, nevertheless, um, I would see this as an opportunity to really fostering a strong network for the quantum technologies. All right, and with this, thank you very much all for joining. I hope you get a good impression about the quantum ecosystem. And um, yes, we are here, we'll be there uh, the afternoon. Um, feel free to get in contact with us and hope you enjoy the Quantum World Congress. Thank you.